Yahuwah mocks at them. Because that's not the truth. It's impossible for them to accomplish this. Possible. So that's that's all I want to share with you tonight. That ought to do it. I thank you for the opportunity. And I want to thank the Love family for getting up and uh, singing and praising tonight. And I want to thank the hosts of. The, this fellowship I really enjoyed coming out here I thank you for all that you've done you've put us up you've fed us well and you've, uh, I just really appreciate your fellowship thank you very much What it means, you know, with the rod and the hand, and because the, the yoda is the father, and then you've got the rod. The the yoda, yoda is the father. Let's go back. Let's go back to the tetragrammaton. Yoda is the father. The hay is the word. The the wa or the vav is the nail, and the hay is the word again. So that's that's the beginning of the pattern, and that's what he gave to Moses. Uh, now, the Hebrew is so ancient and so uh, every, every letter has a picture. English doesn't do that. And uh, Yahuwah loves to set up patterns for us so that we can get a better understanding. He says, if we are faithful in the small thing, we are faithful in much. So we have to see the smaller patterns in order to see the larger patterns. Okay? And so, uh, what it actually, all that, all the patterns are standing for is Father, the Son is at His right hand, and the appointed time He died for us. And then He rose from the dead, and He sits at the right hand of the Father again. That's as simply as I can put it. All of those patterns are saying exactly the same thing, only in a little bit different way. Because the first sign talks about him taking on our, our uh, sin. And all of our sin being poured upon him. And then he becomes a servant for us. But then he dies and he's resurrected again. He becomes the, the reigning king. The second sign is talking about the hand, the leper's hand, and then the good hand. The same pattern. The good hand is showing that he is the right hand of Yahuwah that's referred to over and over again. It says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt by my right arm and my glorious right hand. And then, second, we all know the story of Messiah came and died for us. And now he's, he's at the right hand of the Father again. He is the right hand. Okay, then the third sign is where he actually, the seed actually comes forth from the Father and is gushed out upon the people. And the people spring up in newness of life, but the Messiah turns into blood. Okay? This is ancient. This is not just a New Testament teaching. This is as ancient as the stars. The stars glorify Him. Psalms. What is it, what is it quote? Somebody quote that in Psalms where it says, The heavens declare the glory of Elohim. What the are they declaring? Excuse me? The splendor of His majesty. And? <coughs> splendor of His majesty. This story is ancient. He showed it to Adam. 
If it was written in the stars, and it still is, Adam, when after he put on that little fig leaf, and he was given the animal skin to cover himself, he was given this revelation of how he's going to be brought back into relationship back to the Father again. It's ancient. So you think they all understood it? Yes, because he... This is what we don't understand, guys. We have to remember that the Messiah... Okay, now I'm going to tell you something that you probably never, ever heard of. It's not the first and second coming. Not with this understanding anymore. It's the first coming when he was in the garden with Adam. And he brought the children of Israel through the wilderness. <coughs> and he went before them as the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And he was their rear guard. And he led them through the sea of reeds. Or through this Red Sea. And he was there for them. I can show you prophecy upon prophecy how that it's referred to him. He says, you are of old and you did this for Israel. That's his first coming. His second coming is when he came as a man and he died for us. And his third coming we're waiting for. Oh, hey. It's we're so used to the first and second coming only because that's where the church started. It, the church, their understanding is that the Messiah started as the baby Jesus. And it's because, you know, they only went so far. And so they knew the messenger and um, so when he was revealing himself to, to them, he may have told them all that you just told us to show them in well, the... The, no, not? now me, he make he it says actually the Messiah the Messiah is the best is the best well kept secret of all time because in Isaiah chapter six he says I give you you having eyes will not be able to see you having ears will not be able to hear and you having a heart will not be able to understand. Why? Because they rejected Yahuwah and His Torah. It says that in chapter 5. They rejected Yahuwah and His Torah and the Word of Yahuwah. What is the Word of Yahuwah? It's the Messiah. So since they rejected Him, He's got to hide him from their eyes until the appointed time. And when it got to us, he laid bare his right arm to the nations and he bore his son to the nations and he showed his son to us, making the Jews jealous. And so that in the appointed time, now he can bring both of us together as one. And we will all understand the Messiah. We will all understand the Torah. And we will all understand his name for what it really is. But it's not going to happen by the hands of men. Is going to happen when the Messiah returns and he corrects all things. We need to keep quit beating each other in the head and trying to force things on people. And we need to show things in love and teach patiently so that people can get it and not slam doors in our faces. <laughs>